average as you can get. I'm, bo I'm below average. <laughs> and, I might be below that. <laughs> <laughs> Today on In the Woodyard, we're talking to this guy, my, hey. new, my new best friend, the other Adam. Here we go. <laughs> so when you started doing firewood, did you realize what it was going to turn into? Yeah the best job I ever had. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is the guy that I bought the cherry from that you saw us do yesterday on yesterday's video and a couple other videos. I came, mm. Did I come twice? Yes. Yeah, I came twice. This is the third trip here. So the video you're seeing today, we actually shot the same day as we loaded in all the wood that is in the trailers that we hauled back yesterday that you saw. But Adam is moving and uh, he has got this wood here and he has a pretty cool experience when it comes to firewood, what you've been through. Yeah. Because we were just talking, I said, hey, we need to do a video talking about your experience because you're an average guy. As average as you can get. I'm, <laughs> I'm below average. <laughs> and, I might be below that. <laughs> <laughs> and so you said you grew up with a fireplace, burning yep. wood or heating with wood. And so yep. what state did you grow up in? So Washington State, we uh, didn't seem to have as many uh, species as we seemed to come across in Wisconsin. Because I, yeah. when I was a kid, we just grabbed whatever we could and we threw it in the fireplace and uh, we... You know, we didn't uh, seem to care as much. All, all wood or burns. I didn't. Maybe <laughs> yeah, right, my, yeah, yeah. my age might have uh, caused me not to pay attention. My so dad did you, might have did known. did you heat with wood? Uh, it was like a secondary. Like, right. I think, you know, it was more like we had it in the house. And right. we also had, you know, a uh, regular furnace type right, situation. Right. That, Which is what a lot that of people... It never worked, right? You know, it was oh. a mobile home. Oh. <laughs> so half the time it worked, the other half, you so, got a blanket. <laughs> so out there you have a few species, a lot of pine, whereas here we have like 40 some species yeah. of hardwood alone and then another dozen or so of different kinds of pines and firs and spruces. We got lots of wood here. Yeah. Probably more wood. I, I should say you're forested there. Yeah. But we just have more diversity here. So when you were in Washington State, you lived there till how old? Uh, I lived there my whole life, basically. We were like 40, yeah, basically 39, 40 when we finally moved to Wisconsin. So, oh, really? Really? Yeah, so we've, we're fresh into Wisconsin uh, life and, uh, and all the winters and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we get some cold here. Yeah, yeah. But it hasn't been bad lately. No, we got got off easy this year. Yeah, well, very, very mild year. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about how three things happened this year which is why people didn't burn as much wood this yeah. year. I didn't sell as much because we had very poor economy because everything went up 20, 30%. Um, there was a very mild winter, so mm -hmm. people didn't burn as much. And we have dead ash trees everywhere. Yeah, well, so everybody's got ash, wood. Right? Yeah, you got, you got a lot of wood here. <laughs> got, got ash right here. So. so then when you moved here, the property you bought, you've got uh, uh, acreage here and you had yeah. some trees on here but your house had how many fireplaces or has how many so we added three fire wood burning fireplaces to heat the house yes so we we put a furnace in uh, a propane furnace but we love the f wood fire heat there's uh, nothing you know? like it yeah we, we we were told that uh wood heat is like a blanket propane heat is like somebody breathing in your face mm -hmm. so <laughs> <I'm all right. laughs> so i my wife took that to heart and we put in three wood wood burners and uh and that was a cue for me to say, let's get some firewood. And uh, right. I didn't want to pay for it all. So I had to start sourcing it. And uh, that's right. where I kind of went. And I wasn't uh, picky at first. Yeah, you were and, saying in the beginning you took everything, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, on the property, I had a firewood guy going, what are you taking all this like popular stuff? And and uh, I was, elder yeah, and I was and... scrounging. <laughs> I was taking anything and everything. And he was probably scratching his head going, this guy doesn't know. Well, the thing is, like we were talking, that certain kinds of wood, the, the lower BTU woods, are fine for yeah. the early season and yes. late season burning yeah. when it's not super cold. The and shoulder, the, shoulder month. seasons, Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and any wood is better than no wood. And that's how I took it. And, and uh, like you said, the shoulder months have been great. Yep, I, yep. I use those to get rid of all the poplar and the sure. uh, box elders and yep. the, the softer type uh, hardwoods. Right. And then I got plenty of uh, ash and oak and, and cherry right. and, and things to kind of fill up in between. So out of now that you've been here a while, after burning all the different kinds of wood, what's like your favorite? Um, if I'm just going straight heat, don't have to worry about it. I'm like everybody else, oak, your, uh, your, uh, he heavy BTU type ones, mm -hmm. but mostly, you know, everybody kind of gets wrapped up in oak and, and locusts and, mm -hmm. and, uh, hard maple, stuff like mm -hmm. that, that, uh, allows you, I, I mean, I really, ash has probably been my go-to just because it's so easy to get. Easy to get. And so if you're talking skip. about like what I just have easy access to and I get it really easy from like my, uh, wood service guys, mm -hmm. ash is my go-to. It, mm -hmm. it dries quick. 
It uh, splits fairly easy. Good, yep. It's not like perfectly easy, but it's mm -hmm. it's fairly easy. It's good BTUs. So, great BTUs. You can throw it in overnight, and it mm -hmm. shows in the next morning you have coals there. You can load it up, and you're not having to restart fire. Right. So I would say all in all, uh, in Wisconsin, ash has been a great uh species uh, for me well it'd be nice if it stuck around a little longer I, yeah it's going to be gone in a few years because they're all dying and there's if you don't take them now they don't last long in the woods they tend to rot fast fall yeah. down and pretty soon there'll be no ash oh yeah, well they're all in <laughs> they're all here. Uh, here yeah well <laughs> <laughs> so i've been hoarding them all no uh but yeah then then so, cherry cherry so, is also oh, yeah, another yeah, yeah, one right. that uh, which it, is what we're taking is the for, cherry so. yeah so you're taking my wife's favorite one well, and she <laughs> she, she, we have a, uh, a a kitchen uh wood cook stove so like oh, she nice. bakes and does all that oh, stuff cool. but she she likes how small it is she likes how it smells better um it's easy she, to burn easy to burn she could throw it in it doesn't like take a whole lot if she has to start the fire right. the the bark on it is very flammable too yep, so yep. uh we also like the the cherry so you're getting a good uh yeah, yeah, good, it's good, good stuff. Wood there, and so. so now, so then you went from he taking anything, and then now you prefer the better woods because yeah. you realized it's better. <laughs> yeah, I'm that that snob that you talk about on well, the, the channel. Hey, I'm like, if it's well, not ash, it's not oak, or if it's not something that's a. Um, well, you start to say no because you realize it's just as much work to produce. Yes any kind of wood, you might as well get better stuff if yeah. you're eating with it. Now, if it's just for fun, then it really yeah. doesn't matter. And I could see both spectrum. I see the, yeah. the, the person that sells the firewood like, hey, I had to split it. I had to do all the work. Yeah. So I'm not going cheaper, but as the, the, the yeah. consumer, I'm like, hey, if I could get oak for the same price you're selling yep. the, the box holder, I want the oak, you know? Exactly, so I, could, exactly. I see both sides of the story yeah. of being My brother and I would call with people that only want one kind of yeah. wood, we call them wood snobs. Yeah. Because all wood burns. But yeah. there is some wood that's better than others, and yeah. especially if you're, if you're buying wood or producing wood for heat, the amount of work you put into it, you might yeah. as well make it the best. best. Yeah. yeah, so that makes total sense. And now, I, so you had your three fireplaces. Did that heat the house adequately? Yes. Yeah, so anybody that uh, wants to heat their house, three fireplaces will do it. We have <laughs> a fairly decent sized house. It's uh, with a basement, and you're getting closer to 4,000 wow. square feet. Nice. You know, it's, Is it insulated to good? Uh, I mean, it's 1880s house, so, oh. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, it's insulated, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. We we re -blew, we blew in attic insulation, oh, but the good. wall insulation, you know, who knows? Could be more. Could be it's more. Probably, it, it's probably newspapers. Yeah, could stuff. be. Could be. We tore down a house like that. It was stuffed with newspapers, and all the newspaper had settled down to the bottom. So yeah, no, a lot of open space. You could see the little puck marks uh, that they used sure. uh, from obviously when they built it to as they were modernizing it. They must right. have put in some kind of insulation. But, yeah, uh, yeah, probably. So. Uh, how much wood did you produce and how much is your shed hold? Uh, this, I would say, this is a 20 by 30, and I think mm -hmm. it probably holds about, what, 20 cords of wood? I Four don't know. Cords, something uh, like I, that. Yeah. Um, I think all together, I have like 35 to 40 cords of wood that. Because you um, got some over there, too. I have a bunch over there. I have a bunch that are over there. But, and then, of course, I've been burning, too. So it's slowly been getting shorter. And now that we know we're selling the house, I've been yeah. not producing any wood this year. So yeah. now the wood you've got here is going to go with the house. Yeah. Which is why you're selling some of it. You did all the work. You figured I might as well make some money. Yeah. It, and so. I, I want the new owners to have a good, like, uh, oh, yeah, stockpile, gotta... you know? So how much did you go through in a year? Um, I would say we, we eight cords. Oh, and if you got that much here, they got a couple of years. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, unless I really sell a bunch to you, <laughs> I, I the the new owners are going to have plenty. They're going to yeah, actually to a point where they're going to be like, you know, you probably could have sold a little bit more because. <laughs> well, no, if, if they're going to, if once they start heating with it, they'll start to realize it was good that you had the supply here. And there's going to be a day where like, hey, we got to make more yeah. wood because it, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it's something that goes away. <laughs> well, they have the mountain of uh, oak uh, cutoffs from oh, the, oh, yeah. uh, the that'll that'll take them through a couple of seasons if they just yeah. want to use the um, railroad ties that were not treated. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. Those non, non treated yeah. railroad ties. That's good stuff. Well, and have. it works in every like we have a little 12 inch uh, stove upstairs. And so that's how I got that oh, going okay. is I, I was thinking all these 16 inchers, what am I going to do to stoke the fire up stairs? And I found somebody yeah. that was selling the cutoffs. I had a lady I delivered to, well, it's had to be like three, four years before I started doing YouTube. And she said, I want fast burning wood. And she said, I want either Aspen or Box Elder. She knew what she wanted. Mm -hmm. So I want stuff that burns fast because I have a cook stove. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that makes sense. Because she said, I've tried oak and locust. And she said, it takes longer mm -hmm. to get going. Yep. It's, I want a fast, hot fire. I said, well, that makes total sense. She never told me. 
she had a 12 inch oh, yeah. stove. I get there and it's 16 inches. Well, what am I going to do? I said, uh, and I had dumped the wood already, the full cord. Wow. I had dumped it. She says, well, what am I going to she Her husband had just died like a couple months oh, before that. And I'm yeah. like, oh, what do I do? I, yeah. I said, well, if you want, I said, you know, I, I, just, I was trying to think, what do yeah. I do? Because I didn't want to just leave her. Yeah. She says, well, we got a chop saw in the basement. My husband yeah. used to always chop all the wood this yep. size down for me. So I can do that. Yep. I said, are you sure? I, so I helped her carry a bunch of it downstairs for mm -hmm. her. So she at least had to start. And then she showed me the stove and it was all cool and everything. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, man, I dumped it already. Yeah. And, but she was like, at first, she was like, oh, man, this is yeah. not what I want. I said, well, that's 16 inches of standard yeah. size. Yeah. She says, well, could we cut them in half? I said, well, sure, they can be cut in half. Yeah. She says, well, I can do that. Yeah, so good. I was like, I felt good because I felt bad at first. Yeah. I dumped it all. And well, that's the <laughs> challenge I have with having uh, one stove that takes like 20 to 22 inches, which fits oh, sure. almost anything. And then, like I said, the kitchen stove mm -hmm. takes like exactly like a 16 inch log fits in there. Anything mm -hmm. bigger, you're not shutting that. that right, uh, right. But it's again, it's you don't want to leave that open. And then upstairs, it's a 12 inch. Right. So you're definitely having to decide, OK. And I thought, OK, I had to get these cutoffs because there's no way well once you start processing wood you realize how many cookies you get you get plenty so you don't need to worry about buying a 12 inch cut uh wood yeah. because you get plenty of leftovers that you can break right. up and and for the cook stove if you had to you could go in a day in the day you could take a small chainsaw and yeah. you could always cut all these down to eight inches and they'd Definitely. be great for the cook stove so. yeah and the like i said the cook stove is a, uh, a 16 inch log oh, so it, yeah. it handles mostly all everything i've already processed it's just the upstairs one we always had nice there. so now you're moving and when yep. you move the new house that you're either looking for or going to build are, do, are you going to heat again with wood, do you think? Are you going to want to yeah. continue that? Yeah. You, are you liking the firewood thing? Yeah, I think <laughs> that'll be a lifelong, one, you know, self-sustaining type attitude sure. that we have as a family. We grow our own food. We, you know, like to be able to produce our own heat and not have just a reliance on outside sources, you know, so as you much. So don't, you don't live on government cheese is what you're we saying. We try not to. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, good. We, we, we really try to That's decide. good. You're a real American. You know, <laughs> with, with the wood burning, we love the, the, the heat just like so many Americans do and, right. you know, and uh, and just be able to know that I can go and, and produce, you know, the wood. And, and, uh, and there's so many levels, you know, as you know, you could either a very minimal like mm -hmm. setup you can still produce wood or you can be as high as somebody that uh you mm -hmm. know has a wood process so again just crank it out so, i always tell people when they say i want to get into it i'm like be careful what you wish for yeah because i only started this because i wanted some exercise yeah. and it turned into <laughs> yeah well so, and that and that who knows you could like you said it could start out with just yeah. you know exercise and then it turns into a business or like for us we just uh, it doesn't take a, a large operation right. to produce your own firewood. So now you did all this, and you basically had a box door splitter. You yeah. Had, what What did you have? I, I remember you it was just a champion, it. a Home Depot. Yeah, sorry, sold it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to see the glacier move, um, but it did everything we needed to do. Right. Uh, you know, I don't have the the, the stamina like one. Chris over here, and and uh, I'm gonna take a mall out and, and uh, do <laughs> eight uh, cords of firewood. Well, if you're producing this much, you yeah, you I need found a that it was a uh, worth. Uh, the, t the time and the, the saving yeah. on my back to to get a, a well, it's good to get an splitter. exercise once in a while and just get the axe out and i do that just because it's, it's enjoyable once yeah. in a while just to whack on something and take out your hey andrew from easton made uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean <into> an ultra <laughs> so. yeah well if you're producing a lot of stuff it's really a smart move to step up to yeah. a faster bigger producing splitter but for a homeowner yeah if you're only producing wood for yourself pretty much any splitter works and I'm not going to tell my wife that. I'm going to say that Chris from the Woodyard says I need an ultra from Easton made. My store bought was not. So you go to your next place. Are you thinking? Are you thinking of getting something a little better? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, cool. again, depends on how money is and, and yeah. uh, what the cost is. But yeah, if I can go from the 27 ton uh, Champion splitter mm -hmm. to which again serves the purpose. Yeah. Uh, anybody that has one of those, it never got bogged down. I mean, I cut oh. through all the. The wood that I brought in. So right. if I had to rebuy that, I would in a heartbeat. It was a, it, it did everything I needed. But if I could upgrade, um, I definitely am not yeah. against getting a ultra the, the or a thing about Wolf Ridge or yeah. whatever yeah. Um, splitter that is like kind of the next level up that has yep. a, the return cycle. I think like we all uh, feel like the power is there. It's that return right. cycle that you're just like. 
trying to like maximize. When you go from, uh, you know, a 14 to 16, 17 inch cycle time for your Ram to a four second, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing at how easy it is, how much easier it is and how faster, how much more wood you can produce. And if that's something you want to do, but there's guys that enjoy just making wood, yeah. so that's fine too. The good thing about yeah. the professional models, from what I found, mm. they resell is fantastic. Yeah. People want them. People are always asking for them. They hold their value better. They're yeah. made better. It's just the same as anything else. Yeah. It's a higher quality product, so there's that. Now, the one other thing I want to ask you about, chainsaws. Yeah. So you started out, the first <laughs> chainsaw you bought, what was it? Uh, just the Husky. Very entry level, 440, like just, to, you know, it was just first time being on a farm, uh, five acres in Washington, never really did any kind of chainsaw work. So that was like the cheapest introductory yeah. type thing for me. And man, it's like an addiction because all of a sudden <laughs> I moved to Wisconsin and I was like, I just need an entry level chainsaw. Mm -hmm. Like just get me something that's a, you know, obviously... And it just happened to be still. I'm not a, a brand like enthusiast. I like still. I like. You found Husky. a good dealer, and they I, really helped you out. It's ex yeah. 100, Chris. It was uh, uh, the tree service guy that helped me around the, the property. Mm -hmm. He just happened to know a, a, a steel dealer that um, I went to, and he was just so helpful That's that I was matters, like, so. that that means more to me than like what brand it is. Because yeah. if it was a Husky. Yeah. I would have just jumped right in a Husky and, and yeah. went there. But uh, Having good service is huge, and having a guy that you can ask questions, and he'll tell you the truth, good or bad, that's, mm -hmm. that's huge. And like you said, go going to a place that you can trust the guy that if something's wrong, he's going to make it right, tell you what needs to be done, and get it done. That's really all that matters. That's 100%. Thing. And that's exactly yep. uh, what I found in, in the steel That's dealer. what I tell people all the time. If you really want to get a decent chainsaw, do not buy it from a box store. Yeah. Go to a dealer, tell them what you're going to do. They'll make a good recommendation. You can always take it back to them if it's not quite right. Yeah. And then prove or whatever you need to yeah. do. Yeah. It's and, just the and, way to do it. And if you can afford a professional chainsaw, just oh, do it. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, that's, I think, the hardest thing to, like, pay the money up front. Yeah. Because you want to save it. And then mm. you realize after, you know, you get one. And I think you've probably talked about it before. Once you go from, like, a store-bought or an entry-level, like... Uh, homeowner saw to mm -hmm. a professional one night and day it is night and day and then yep. of course that's when the <laughs> the collection starts all of a sudden you're so like so then you got a, a 362 you said chris you're gonna get me in trouble this is gonna be <laughs> embarrassing i uh, i started out 362 that was mm -hmm. a recommendation for entry good level saw. yeah really and good it got me going and then i went to a 661 well that's said, a big jump that you well yeah because i didn't want it to be small right? right i was like well why do i need a i don't want to go from 362 and just make a small i want to make it worth the difference right Big difference when you were cutting wasn't it yeah well then you start going like well shoot there's a 462 yeah and i said well also it's nice to be able to grab a 261 you know and there so if go. i just am doing some lemon and, and i don't want to grab my bigger ones that's a good that's a good collection <laughs> so now i got a 261 a 362 a 462 <laughs> a 661 and then Christmas came and everybody started talking about that 500i. You had to have it. Didn't and you? my daughter yeah. surprised me on Christmas with a 500i, the best president uh, I could have gotten. Oh, and that's uh, awesome. and so now I have this massive collection of chainsaws and um, I can't problem. justify it. But I don't do have a know, lot of do, vices. Do you know the right? That. Yeah. Do you know the right number of chainsaws to have? Do you know what it is? Because I know the number. Yeah. There's never enough. No. More. 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 That's yeah. the right answer. <laughs> There you go. Well, I, 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 I'm at that uh, to where I probably should be careful how much more I get. You probably are adequate right now. Maybe yeah. a top handle. That's, don't, oh, don't, you <laughs> I've thought of that, you know, or at least maybe trading one of my higher end ones that uh, I don't necessarily uh, use as much, you know, because yeah. I do find it's kind of silly, but I find I grab my 261 a lot. Yeah, you, uh, you gravitate towards the one you like a lot. And you don't well, even it's know just it. light and quick, yep. and uh, does what you need to do. It, you know, again, I'm not a commercial for, uh, like a chain, uh, cutter, and so for me to grab a, you know, a 661, unless I'm really getting into like. But a you head, need that just in case there's a big tree. Well, if I have to grunt and act <laughs> like I'm, a, you know, big guy, and or I hear my neighbor down the road going, yeah, then of yeah. course I have to get the bark box going. Oh. I, you know, it has to really, you know, have a chainsaw off, you know, and, nice. you know, it's... So there you go, people. He's one of you. You, <laughs> yeah. this is this is Adam, and he is just like a lot of you that just enjoy firewood just like I do. 
And I just thought it'd be kind of neat to talk to one of you because this is you probably a lot of you are going to say, "Yep, oh, that's me. Yep. That's how I am too." So more wood, more chainsaws, and you love doing it. So yep. thanks a lot for having me here. Thanks for uh, letting me buy your wood from you <laughs> and meeting you. And that is it for today, folks. We'll see you tomorrow, 5:30 a.m. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.